Right, well, good morning, everyone. My name is Andre Plot. I'm Dean of the Faculty of Public Affairs, and thank you very much for joining us this morning. I hope that you will be able to learn a bit more what it's like to be a student in the Faculty of Public Affairs. So to give you some insights into that, we have two students uh, here with, you, with us today to talk about their experience, uh, experiences and to answer any questions you might have. So I'll introduce both students, then I'll turn it over uh, to, to them because they are the stars of the show. So first of all, I'd like to introduce uh, James Prowse who's a third year student uh, in the Bachelor of Arts in Political Science with a concentration in international relations and a minor in law. James works on Parliament Hill uh, when he's uh, amongst us here at Carleton. Uh, and then we also have with us uh, Dawson Brain, uh, Bain, sorry. Uh, uh, Dawson is a fourth year student in the Bachelor of Public Affairs and, and Policy Management, but he's here today because he has a minor in economics. So he's part of that program uh, as well. Uh, Bur uh, Dawson has served on the Arthur Kruger College Educational Student Society this year and is a part as a partner of the Community Outreach Portfolio. So without any further ado, I'll turn it over to James. Well, uh, good morning, everybody. I guess, yeah, we're still morning. Good morning, everyone. And uh, thank you um, to the Dean and thank you to Stephanie uh, for setting today's session up. Again, uh, my name is James Prouse and I am a third year political science student uh, with a minor in law um, and legal studies and my concentration is in international relations. Um, when preparing for these sort of events, I often uh, look back at my own uh, application documents and uh, acceptances and I, and I think uh, how exciting uh, it was to be accepted to university. But I uh, was thinking on my way in uh, to work this morning that uh, I couldn't imagine applying to university and getting ready to transition during a uh, pandemic when all the classes uh, are now online. So I hope to, uh, I hope Dawson and I can uh, answer some questions or uh, settle some nerves that some of you may have. I can imagine a lot of people's plans have been upended by this pandemic. Um, so yeah, I'll just tell you a little bit about myself uh, and then address some areas and then uh, pass it over to um, Dawson. So I actually didn't originally come to Carleton for political science. I came uh, to Carleton for public affairs and policy management. Um, that Dawson will be able to talk about. Um, but I uh, switched for a couple reasons. Uh, nonetheless, it's still a great program. Um, but I switched uh, to the Bachelor of Arts in Political Science and I haven't looked back since. Um, it's been an awesome program thus far. I've loved all my professors. I love my classmates. And it's, uh, of course, great to be in Ottawa. Um, one of the most important things uh, that I learned in first year was uh, I really came to appreciate the breadth and the depth of political science as a discipline and as an academic unit. Um, I kind of came in with the uh, assumption that political science is going to be, oh, we're going to learn about the House of Commons or Canadian government, but uh, it's really uh, interesting in first year that I would, uh, it opened up my eyes really to the uh, vast amount of intersections political science has with uh, law and economics and um, other other departments. Um, so it's really that's really uh, eye opening and great. And another um, very important lesson uh, that first year taught me was uh, the ability to think and write critically, to uh, accept other people's uh, opinions and other people's uh, arguments and really be able to reflect on those and incorporate those into making myself a better learner as well as um, helping me understand an uh, issue um, beyond my perception of the issue. Um, overall, and I don't want to sound cliche here, uh, first year was, uh, like I said, it was great um, and it really opened my mind. It, I, I find I really, it helped me uh, develop as a person um, very quickly and um, like I said, I haven't looked back since. Uh, Carleton also is just amazing, like I said, uh, because of the Capitol Hill connection, the capital advantage, what the faculty calls it, um, in terms of there's no better place to study politics than in the nation's capital itself. I know um, our school is 15 minutes away from Parliament Hill, where numerous uh, students work as 
political staffers like myself or uh, have internships or uh, volunteer at um, non-governmental organizations, GR firms, uh, work in the public service. So uh, it, it's great besides uh, the, uh, the opportunities to get involved, it's just a really great opportunity uh, to really understand the uh, context of the political issues that you're studying. Um, I'm gonna talk about my, uh, some extracurriculars that I was involved in in my first year, and I still am involved in them actually. Um, off campus, my, uh, first, my favorite extracurricular is volunteering at the Ottawa Mission. Um, I was actually made aware of this opportunity through uh, connecting the community um, program through residents. Um, and it's really just great, a great opportunity to explore the uh, Ottawa community, um, to explore um, how people live um, beyond, uh, beyond campus and um, it really just uh, opens up your eyes to some issues that are going on in the community. But it's really great to uh, volunteer and it uh, helps you get off campus. On campus, though, on a more uh, positive and uplifting note, uh, my favorite extracurricular uh, was being involved in the youth wing of a national political party, um, which really helped me open the doors um, to tons of experiential opportunities on Parliament Hill here. It helped me almost get my first job um, working on Parliament Hill. I met tons of uh, like-minded uh, young people from across the country who also work on Parliament Hill and it just created a lot of great friendships. Um, and then uh, now I'm gonna talk about a couple things that I wish I knew uh, before coming here to uh, university. Um, and again, I, I don't wanna sound cliche here, but uh, one of the major points I wanna drive home here is that um, it's going to be okay, and it sounds silly, but um, but this pandemic has really, like I said, upended a lot of people's plans. Um, and really, at the end of the day, uh, university is a massive change. Um, we and our loved ones often place unrealistic expectations upon ourselves. And it's uh, important that we don't uh, be too hard on ourselves, um, aiming high of course is great, but uh, it's important not to compare ourselves to peers and uh, not to get too down on ourselves when we um, don't achieve some of the goals or the expectations that we had. Um, I certainly didn't um, achieve half of the things I wish I had achieved in first year, um, but it's part of the learning experience. And that leads me to my next point um, that I wish I knew in first year as well, that uh, plans change. Um, in many respects in first year, I missed a lot of, uh, a lot of great opportunities uh, by being stuck in my ways and uh, being um, persistent on sticking to my original plan that I had coming into university. Um, but then I ended up switching programs. I ended up uh, taking different courses than I originally planned. Um, I ended up doing a lot of um, different things than what I had originally planned. So I would say follow the path that university takes you on, not the path that you had planned out for yourself. Um, adapting and evolving as a person, following this path that university will take you on will prove to be a lot more rewarding than um, the plan that you think you have laid out for yourself. Um, that's pretty much the end of um, the substantive remarks from me. If uh, anybody has any questions, uh, I'm happy to take questions after uh, Dawson speaks. Um, and I'm also happy to connect uh, with you guys individually. I can share my uh, info at the end of the presentation here. Uh, happy to talk about school, professional opportunities, or anything else that anyone may be interested in. Um, with that being said, I'm gonna hand floor over to Dawson. I uh, really appreciate the opportunity and uh, for everyone listening to me. Thank you. Okay, thanks a lot, James. That was that was great. Uh, you covered quite a bit, so I'm going to do my best to follow that, but for real, thank you. Um, so hi, everyone. Good morning. Uh, I'm Dawson Brain. Uh, although I'm not an economics major, I'm, I've taken quite a few courses in economics, so that's why I'm here today. I'm actually as um, Stephanie said at the beginning, I'm in the Public Affairs and Policy Management program um, with a minor in economics and a specialization in economic policy. So, yeah, no, you guessed it, I, I do like economics. <laughs> um, 
So, yeah, I'll just let me drive this home too. actually. James made a really good point that things will be okay. I know it's super weird right now. Um, I can't imagine how you must be feeling coming into a world you have no idea what it's like, especially with the pandemic and things are online. I'm sure it's intimidating, but, you know, I think one of the things I learned uh, in first year especially is you, you just adapt. You hunker down and you get it done. So have faith in yourself, have confidence, things will be okay. Um, so one thing that I learned in first year, I think James also touched on this as well, is how interconnected all the courses you're going to take are. Um, you know, Economics 1000 was really eye-opening for me. Um, I had not taken economics before first year, and it really opened my eyes to how society, but, you know, how markets work, how the world functions in a capitalist way. So you're going to learn so many things. That's one example of how many things you'll learn that you'll apply to law, poli sci, whatever you take. Um, so just, you know, as absorb as much as you can. Um, it, you can't lose. Everything that you take on is only going to benefit you. Um, extracurricular wise, um, on campus, I was in first year encouraged to do intramural basketball. Um, a lot of my friends had done high school basketball and they needed me to join. I don't even consider myself particularly athletic, but it was an amazing time. I met so many different people, not just on the team that we put together, but other teams as well. And, you know, if basketball is not your thing. There are many other extracurricular intramural leagues like hockey, flag football, soccer. Um, so whatever you're interested in, go for it. It's um, so many opportunities. And outside sports, there, as you're probably aware, you probably read this online, there are over 200 clubs on campus. Um, and there's a massive club expo right at the beginning of the year. I don't really know how that will work with um, the pandemic, but I'm sure that they'll still be taking uh, new recruits. People, they always want people to get involved. Uh, so you don't worry about that. There will always be something where you can find your place and find something that you can grow as a person. Um, and then off campus, um, I don't do this right now, but I was lucky enough to um, work on Mayor Jim Watson's re-election campaign in 2018. Um, and that was an amazing experience. So I'm pretty sure in your time at Carleton, there will be another uh, municipal election. So you know, keep your eyes open for that. That's one example of off-campus involvement that you might consider. Um, again, another great way to meet people, uh, get your name out there, get experience on your resume. You, you can't lose. It was, it was an amazing experience. And Jim Watson's a great guy. I was really lucky to meet him. So yeah, I look back on that very fondly. Um, and then one thing that I wish I knew in first year. Um, so out of high school, when I applied to public affairs policy management, I applied with the co-op option just because I'd heard that it was good and uh, it'll be valuable experience for you. I seriously underestimated how valuable uh, that experience would be. Um, I don't know how many of you are considering co-op or are already enrolled, but I would really recommend that you at least consider it if it's something that would work for you. Um, it was, I was lucky enough to get a position at Transport Canada last summer for my first co-op term. Um, and I really liked it. Uh, everything went really smoothly. So I was lucky enough to get hired back again for the fall and then this summer as well. So that opportunity has led to two other opportunities where I've been able to grow my experience and my knowledge of the public policy world. And it's been amazing. And I, if you had asked me in first year what co-op would do for me, I wouldn't have been able to tell you that. But so I'm telling you now, just maybe consider it. Um, and then, yeah, I think I'll finish with it's first year, certainly an adjustment. I, I would never sugarcoat that. It's, it's a lot at times. Um, but I was certainly not as dedicated as I was in high school. Um, or I'm more dedicated now than I was in high school. I've 
maybe didn't try as hard in school or I didn't feel as confident in my intelligence, but Carlton has this amazing way to transform you into a person that is passionate about something. You'll find what you really excel at or what you feel strongly about if you don't already know that. And you'll learn a lot about yourself and how you fit into this world that we're living in. And I really can't credit Carlton enough for uh, giving me the skills to learn that about myself. So have faith and have confidence. You're going to do fine and enjoy every minute of it. You only get one first year. I know it's going to be weird, but you only get one. So make it count. Uh, and then, yeah, like James said, I'm happy to take questions afterwards. Uh, I'm also happy to connect um, in the school year or now. Um, we can talk about anything. I'm more than happy to answer any questions. I think that's it for me. Thank you so much, James and Dawson. Couldn't have said it better myself. Uh, definitely, thank you so much for sharing those experiences with us today. Um, so now the uh, session is open to questions for anybody. Please feel free to either unmute your mic now and ask your question either to both of our ambassadors today or you can single out one. Uh, the chat is now also open for questions if you prefer writing them in the chat. I will read out the question and our ambassadors will answer the questions. So I'm actually going to start off the question period today. Uh, so this is to both of you. How do you find the workload in person versus online? You wanna go first, James? Yeah, sure. Um, so I actually began taking some online courses uh, through summer school and before the pandemic. So um, I find that uh, online courses are uh, a lot more self-directed. Uh, the profs give you a lot more uh, leeway um, to make sure that your readings are done, to uh, ensure that you're, especially if it's uh, more, if it's not live, for example, through Zoom or through uh, Big Blue Button, you have to ensure that you're reviewing your readings. You have to ensure that you're reviewing uh, the PowerPoints the profs put up or the lecture notes. Um, I know I've had like uh, at, even at the beginning of the pandemic um, when we moved all online, a lot of the teachers um, were kind of like, "What what are we going to do now?" So they um, just a lot of them started posting their speaking notes, for example. So in conjunction with the powerpoints, reading the speaking notes, um, taking your own notes and comparing them to the readings. Uh, online is a lot more self-directed, but I mean, it's very rewarding if you're a, um, if you're a student that can hold yourself accountable, um, a lot more so than I find in class. Yeah, I would have to agree. Um, big emphasis on self-direction. You really have to be disciplined and okay, so now your bedroom is not just your sleeping area, but it's also your workspace. It's okay, I need to sit down at my desk and put in four hours of work today on X, Y, and Z. And you'll get there. That's, that's just part of learning how to be self-disciplined. I'm sure with high school, it was kind of like that as well with the pandemic, you know, that was online too. Um, so you're, that's nothing new for you. It's just a matter of setting out, okay, today I need to accomplish this and doing it. Um, and then one other thing I, James kind of touched on this too is, it's also been challenging for teachers and profs alike. Um, you know, this is an adjustment for them too. So you kind of have to be sympathetic to that, that okay, they're still figuring out what's the best way to deliver the course and how can I uh, learn still and not necessarily make their lives more difficult, but ask effective questions that will actually further your learning and the class's um, productive, uh, sessions. So as long as you can have that awareness um, and that sympathy for them, it's learning as well, then you'll, you'll excel. Thank you okay. both. All right, so I have a question in the chat from Ali to James. How do you get an internship on Parliament Hill? Is there anything I should be doing in first year to make myself a better candidate? Oh, you're muted, Jim. <laughs> I'm muted. Uh, I'm a moron. Sorry. Um, 
that's a question a lot of students ask, um, especially, well, and it, I can address this from two different ways. Um, and maybe Dawson can talk about this. I don't come from a background in the public service. Um, that's not something I've ever really been interested in. I'm more on the political aspect of things. So I can't speak to if you're looking for an internship um, with the public service, I can't speak to that. On the political side, um, there's a plethora of different ways that you can go about getting an internship. Um, and whether you want to be a volunteer or you're looking for something more substantive in terms of um, maybe getting a job. Uh, I know most of the, the three main political parties on campus um, offer some sort of internship program through uh, their, their uh, activism on campus where they'll connect you with members of parliament um, on the Hill where uh, you can volunteer, for example, once or twice or three times a week, however many is comfortable. Um, but I would also say like, if that's, this is something you're passionate about, maybe you're a member of a political party back home, or maybe you have um, some involvement with a campaign or an elected member back home, I'd definitely say reach out to them um, or email their Parliament Hill office and say, hey, listen, um, I'm a political science student or a PAPM student. I'm looking to get involved and uh, to expand my network. Um, I, we get a lot of emails um, like that, especially in my office, uh, the member of Parliament I work for. And um, it's so exciting to see that when young people want to get involved, especially coming from somebody like myself who's in university. Um, as soon as I see that, I, I'm always uh, jumping at the opportunity to uh, get my boss to bring them on and uh, see if they can get involved in our office. So uh, I'm not going to ramble on here, but uh, definitely uh, there's a lot of different ways. Reach out, uh, do some of the groundwork yourself, um, or, or um, do it through a uh, campus uh, wing of a uh, political party. Uh, those are the most common. Um, I know, uh, I think it's Access, is it Dawson? Um, they, I think they run some sort of program where, well, where they will connect you with a member of parliament, um, but I'm not, I'm not sure about that program. Um, so yeah, um, maybe Dawson can touch on the public service side if he has anything to add. Yeah, I'll just jump in really quick. Um, just to finish up the, uh, on the Parliament Hill side, you can even check the uh, Carleton Job Board or the a Volunteer Board as well. Uh, the My Success Portal, that's, that includes co-op, that includes internships, even just jobs and volunteer opportunities. Amazing resource. They post, like political parties or members specifically will post, uh, they're looking for a volunteer for eight hours a week. And uh, it's a great opportunity. I was privileged enough to do that in second year uh, with a member of parliament, just ask via the job board. So check that out as well. And then uh, public service wise, um, I don't really know if there are too many volunteer opportunities available, but definitely if you go on FSWEP, that's Federal Student Work Experience Program or the co-op job board, if you're interested in co-op, super easy to um, get access to those student jobs with the public service across all the government agencies, um, organizations, excuse me. So lot, yeah, like James said, a ton of different avenues you can take to get to those opportunities. Thank you so much. I really hope that answered the question. Uh, I think that was, uh, those are great answers. Uh, so I do, I did forget to mention at the beginning of the question period that uh, when it comes to looking into signing up for certain courses or changing courses, uh, the best thing to do is to talk to an academic advisor. You can find them and make online appointments with them on the Carleton uh, website. So just, uh, just to let you know that you should visit your academic advisors uh, usually twice a year, once a year is good as well. I visit them every semester and I found it quite helpful to keep me on track. Andre, did you have something to add? Yes, I just wanted to, if the issue is more about changing programs than changing courses, then I think, uh, you know, Stephanie's advice about talking to a, an academic advisor holds even more strongly because it's, it is a, a bigger change. However, please, please understand our programs in FPA, most of them are designed to make it relatively easy for you to walk across programs, to change your programs 
especially kind of in first year or early in second year. So there's a lot of flexibility, but I would advise you please to talk to an academic advisor if you ever want to do something like that. Thanks. Thank you, Andre. So uh, those were both in reference to uh, Carmenia's and Isabel's questions. Is it complicated changing your course and finding uh, different course sections to accommodate a busy schedule? Isabel also asked an important question that I think our ambassadors can answer about tips on achieving a work slash school balance. And I think this also goes for uh, social life as well. So how do you guys achieve that balance? I muted again. Do you want to start maybe uh, Dawson and then I'll go after? Yeah, sure. Um, I think, honestly, that's a really good question. And I think it's difficult to answer on a uh, broad basis. I think it's different for everyone. I think that you'll quickly figure that out uh, September, October of first year. Um, at least that's when I figured it out. Uh, you know, you might depending on who you are, go be going into first year with this mindset of, oh, I need to pour uh, 160 out of the 168 hours in a week into school. And that's my life now. I can't do anything else. As, as daunting as it may seem, you will have time for you. You will have time to, uh, you know, have a socially distanced hangout. You will have time to watch Netflix. As long as you chunk what you need to do, if you set up a nice, schedule for yourself and say, okay, if I can put in my four hours of work today on X, Y, and Z, then I'll have the rest of the day to work out or do whatever you need to do. It really is just about self uh, control and organization. And if you can set that up early on, then you'll be golden for the rest of your university career. James, you want to touch on that as well yeah, yeah absolutely um i and i think the i think you you can also replace um you know achieving work in school life balance with uh, achieving you know personal time like uh, dawson mentioned versus school balance um i came into first year with the mindset of being incredibly dedicated and i um think that not taking time to um, take care of myself um really really um affected me in some ways. So I think it's also, it's really important that uh, you achieve work school balance, but you also achieve personal um, school balance where you're taking time um, from away from academics, but more on the question of achieving work uh, school balance. Um, I can talk to that. I mean, I work uh, 20 hours a week, so I've had to um, schedule my courses in the evening um, it, where it's good, where some of my uh, profs are also or instruct, instructors rather are also lawyers or uh, public servants through the day. So they, their courses are in the evening. I'm very lucky for that. Um, but like Dawson said, um, make a schedule, hold yourself accountable to that. Um, and then some of the courses now are going to be more self-directed online. So um, I presume you should be able to do that coursework um, at your own convenience. So if that is in the evening or on your lunch break or whatever, um, that I, I would imagine that would be the best way in proceeding. Um, but make a plan that works for yourself um, and stick to the plan, hold yourself accountable. Thank you very much again. So we also have, we had a question from Roman in the chat that said, how do we view our courses online and access the syllabus? Underneath that, Dean Andre did answer that course outlines should be available online through C-Learn uh, by the end of August or early September. And then, uh, so that one's nicely answered. Thank you, Dean. And then we have uh, another question from Iman and uh, they asked, is it manageable to double major in both economics and political science? I'll start off by saying it depends on the person, everybody's course loads and yeah, university experience, academic and socially are, uh, you know, they're always different, basically customized to you. Uh, but based on what you know and your feelings, how do James and Dawson, uh, how would you respond to this as well? Yeah, so I can't, I can't comment directly on uh, economics and political science because I'm not an economics minor. Um, but I can attest to doing a uh, minor in law and legal studies. And it's definitely manageable, of course, because you build taking those courses into your schedule. 
um, right? You take, uh, you take the, I guess the core courses for economics would be in first year and second year, I guess, similarly to law. Um, but it's, it's definitely manageable. It, and it also uh, helps you develop also as a person because you're going to be able to bring that knowledge that you gain in economics into uh, your political science courses and vice versa. It's the exact same thing with law where you're uh, able to take the uh, practical application of law and statute and bring that into politics and uh, vice versa, see how politics influences uh, law. So very manageable. It's great. I love taking a minor. Um, I know maybe Dawson could talk about the economics aspect a little more because I'm not in economics. So. Um, yeah, well said, James. Um, I'm, I'm not taking a double major, so I, I can't really speak to how demanding that would be. But um, one thing I will stress is how valuable a resource the academic advising team is. Um, you know, if you were to take this question to them early on and say, look, at this is my plan. This is what I want to do by the end of my university career. I have no doubt that they'd have no issue setting up a detailed plan or at least give you one year of plans to, okay, do this for first year and we'll see how that far that gets you. Because um, that's, that's literally their job. That's what they're meant to do. So, you know, if that resource is available for you, then definitely take advantage of it. Um, and then, yeah, for taking a minor, um, I asked how difficult a minor would be to add to my degree. And they basically broke it down for me step by step and what it was needed for me. So with that type of organization, I think it's very doable. And so more just to say more generally, it's certainly possible to do a double major in economics and political science. And you can do that either through the Bachelor of Arts start with political science and then double major in economics, or you can do that through the Bachelor of Economics and then do a double major in political science. So technically it's possible, but as both James and Dawson has, have highlighted, it's kind of your decision to make. There are constraints, you know, you have to take certain set courses and please talk to academic an academic advisor about a pr the path to getting this done. Thank you so much. Very well-rounded answers. So I don't have any more questions in the chat. Uh, we do have nine minutes left of this session. So if you do have any questions, uh, no question is silly or anything like that. If you're wondering, somebody else probably is too. Uh, so I will ask one more question um, while we wait for any more answers. And then if we have none, that will be the end of our session. But a question we hear a lot coming from first year students what is the difference between a lecture, tutorial, and discussion class? I can just uh, touch on that quickly. Um, so a lecture is usually two hours or three hours, and uh, that's basically you sitting in a lecture hall, probably what you've imagined if you've seen movies or shows about university. It's anywhere between 100 and 400 people. Um, and you'll have a professor or a contract instructor speaking at the front of the lecture hall. And it's, they're like, you can't use a better word. They're lecturing you. They're telling you, this is the information you need to take down. And they're, if most profs are, if they're effective, they'll ensure that they're getting the message across by doing knowledge checks or people will ask questions and they'll effectively answer them. But they're not necessarily, um, they won't necessarily do that. They're given a job of conveying this information and it's on you to take that down. Um, so that's a lecture. And then a tutorial and a discussion group, or at least in my opinion, kind of the same thing where it's you and anywhere between seven or eight and 20 people sitting in a smaller room discussing what you've just learned at the lecture. Um, so it's led by a uh, teaching assistant, usually, where these people are hired to actually ensure that you understand what's just been told to you. Uh, that's, that's their job. And this is your opportunity to kind of ask more detailed questions or kind of incite uh, meaningful discussion about the course content. Um, and if you can't 
really even think of a good question to ask, that's not an issue because a teaching assistant will definitely ask it. They're trying to make sure that all these 20 people, uh, their questions that they're not even really necessarily asking are covered. Uh, so yeah, I would say those are the two differences between a lecture and a discussion group tutorial. James, did you want to uh, touch on that too? Yeah, uh, the only thing that I would add uh, for sure is that um, in your, well, the teaching assistants are going to ensure that you're engaging with the material in a meaningful manner. Um, but you're also, the teaching assistants are going to be the ones that are going to be, for the most part, evaluating your work. Um, right, so it's not going to be the prof that's going to be marking 400 papers. Uh, so it's a really great opportunity to, especially in first year where writing is a massive uh, change from writing in high school. It's really going to help you uh, develop your ideas, uh, develop great arguments, um, really connect with the people that are going to be giving you marks um, and helping um, you develop as a learner. So. Overall, I, I find uh, the tutorials and the discussion groups incredibly helpful. Um, I probably learn the same amount, if not more, in discussion groups and tutorials. Um, and they're, they're great. So take every opportunity. All the TAs are super nice. Um, take the opportunity to connect with the TAs. And uh, if you're willing to, um, to endeavor to meet them and to get to know them, they're willing to help you um, be successful. So it's a great opportunity to, um, to really develop yourself. Perfect, thanks again. Uh, so we did have a couple questions come in in the chat. So the first one is from Amen. Uh, pardon me if I pronounce any of your names wrong, I apologize. Um, if I'm struggling in any of the course syllabus, will it be easy to reach a mentor slash teacher assistant later on for extra help? Yeah, I, I would say that's it's uh, relatively easy to reach them. Usually in the course syllabus, if you're struggling with something, then you can look at the syllabus and you'll find either the prof's email or the teaching assistant's emails as well. Um, and you can reach out to them and say, hey, you know, I'm, I'm struggling with X, Y, and Z. Could you point me to a resource that might help me better understand? And if it's not sitting down with a teaching assistant, then... Uh, they'll point you in the direction of something that will help your understanding. And then further, there's actually uh, for select courses that are particularly difficult for first year students, there's something called peer assisted study sessions. I might have got that wrong. Uh, but basically, this is an additional group outside of your tutorial and your lecture that they will go over the material even further. And uh, it's actually really helpful uh, because usually it's provided for courses that are particularly difficult. So it's a super valuable resource. You just meet maybe, I think it's like an hour a week or something. And yeah, definitely take advantage of that. Yeah, and, um, and as, uh, as Dawson mentioned, even some profs will uh, give you maybe a one or 2% extra if you uh, I know in first year for sure, get, if you show up to pass um, past sessions, I know I've had a couple courses where profs have given me one or 2% at the end of the term in first year for going to those. So yeah, great sessions um, to get help if need be. Fantastic, thank you again. Uh, so our next question is from Maddie. With the libraries closed for COVID, will there be online resources to accommodate for this? So the answer to that is yes. Most of the, a, a very large proportion of, the, of our libra library's collection is, a, is in fact available online. And so it's certainly, uh, you can certainly do that, uh, access most of the collection that way. On top of that, they have another agreement with, uh, with a, a consortium of libraries to make materials at other libraries available to our students and faculty members. So that would help on top. And uh, if, uh, there will also be curbside service uh, uh, on campus uh, that's going on right now. But right, really, uh, you should be paying attention to what's available through the reserve uh, part of the library. That's where uh, people who teach courses or course instructors will frequently put all of the materials that you need for their course uh, available through reserves. So 
we have been planning for this and the library has been putting a lot of material online in, uh, as a result of that. Thank you so much, Dean Andre. Uh, so we do only have two minutes left. So this will be our last question uh, from Prince Uwa. Uh, can I switch to an honors program at any point in time after my first year? Uh, so I don't know the exact answer to this, but an academic advisor will, and I think the Dean also has a note. And so the answer is yes, you can switch to an honors program. It's easier to do if you do this earlier in your program, because sometimes the structure of courses that you must take are different from what is a general program or a 15 credit program to an honors program. So the sooner you decide, the better at some level. But as Stephanie indicated, please, as you're considering this, please talk to an academic advisor uh, once you started your program. Thank you so much to both Dean Andre and Dawson and James. Uh, we had a wonderful chat this morning that was great, very insightful. Uh, I actually even learned a lot too in just being an employee. And I just wanted to say again, thank you all for joining us this morning. And I wish you the best of luck in your academic year. Great. Thank you, everybody. Thanks for, thanks for being here. And thanks to James and uh, Dawson. Have a good day. Bye-bye. Thank you.